today I am in the outskirts of Atlanta. More specifically, I'm in Lawrenceville, Georgia, which is part of Gwinnett County. This true crime story today is a little bit different than the stories that I usually do, and that's because the story isn't actually over yet. It is still making its way through the court system, and people are still being arrested, and that's because as the investigation went along, it took detectives down a rabbit hole of corruption that will wind up sending many people to prison for the rest of their lives. It was back in 2019, two men were found brutally murdered in one of the storage units here right behind me. Since the discovery of those bodies, at least five people have been arrested and they are proactively looking for more participants as we speak. This is the double murders of Derek Ruff and Joshua Jackson. So, I'm currently in the storage facility here in Lawrenceville, Georgia. It's ridiculously hot outside. I pour and sweat, uh, but we're gonna get through it. Back in 2019, uh, like I said in the intro, a horrific discovery was made in one of the units here behind me. We're at the extra space self storage here in Lawrenceville. This whole thing started on December 14th, 2018 in Athens, Georgia. On that day, police were called out to this neighborhood right here to investigate the murder of 32 year old Rodriguez Apollo Turker. He was shot to death right here, right outside of his home. The investigators believe that Rodriguez was killed in some sort of retaliation for a drug deal or a beef that he had with someone. Nevertheless, despite their initial beliefs, law enforcement still went on to investigate and they followed up with all of the residents near here and they attempted to figure out what happened. While the homicide detectives were still working on this case, four days later, four days after Rodriguez's death on December the 18th, investigators received two missing persons reports. One of them was for 25 year old Derek Ruff and another for 25 year old Joshua Jackson. They were both best friends and they didn't go anywhere without each other, meaning wherever they were, they were probably together. Now, that murder I just talked about, the murder of Rodriguez Rucker, uh, it's gonna play another part in this story later on, so we're gonna come back to it here in a little bit. Neither one of the two men that were reported missing, Derek Ruff or Joshua Jackson, neither one of them were prone to just disappearing. They both liked to play sports, they both had good paying jobs, they both had girlfriends, and they both had children. Joshua Jackson had one baby girl, and Derek Ruff had twin baby girls, and both of them loved their children. And both men enjoyed having their little families. In fact, on the day that they disappeared, Derek Ruff had been visiting with his father, and he had even shown his father an engagement ring, and he told his father that day, that he was going to propose to his girlfriend and baby mama later on that week for Christmas. Neither of the two men had, a, had any reason to disappear or run away. It was quite the opposite, actually. They had a ton of reasons to hang around. On December the 17th of 2019, that was Joshua Jackson's daughter's birthday, and Joshua Jackson missed it, which was unlike him. Joshua's family becomes super concerned because he didn't show up after he had pretty much planned this whole party and he had told everyone how excited he was for it. They became concerned, as I said, because he didn't show up for it. That very same day, Derek Ruff's family had become concerned because he had not spoken with his twin girls or his father or his girlfriend in several days, which was also something that he would never do so both families called each other since the two men were so close. Hey, have you seen Joshua or have you seen Derek? And no one had seen either of them for at least a day. As I said, this was unusual for both of them. So at this moment, both families called law enforcement and reported both men missing. Investigators 
quickly went to the homes of both men and they spoke with their families and both families gave nearly identical descriptions of both Derek and Joshua. They were both hardworking men who had good heads on their shoulders. They didn't mess around with drugs or guns or gangs or anything like this. They just went to work and attempted to support their families. And they were last seen together. Investigators knew that their disappearances had to be connected because they were best friends and they both came up missing at the same time. So investigators immediately hit the ground running, checking with their informants and talking to anyone that they could talk to, to try to get information. Within a week, law enforcement had located Derek Ruff's Ford Expedition in a parking lot in Lawrenceville, Georgia. So they pulled the security camera footage and they can see that the vehicle was dropped off by a couple of men who were riding in a Jeep Grand Cherokee. So they put out a be on the lookout for this Jeep Grand Cherokee. Unfortunately for law enforcement though, and the families of Joshua Jackson and Derek Ruff, days turned into weeks and weeks turned into months. Christmas passed and New Year's passed and there was no sign of either man. Derek and Josh's families begged and pleaded for information in newspapers and magazines and TV. They never gave up. Out of the blue one day, on March 17th of 2019, three months to the day after both men went missing, and 30 miles away here in Lawrenceville, Georgia, the management here at this extra space storage facility called the police and reported a vehicle that had been parked on their property for a couple of days. It wasn't registered with the office and it was just sitting outside of a storage unit. So officers arrive here on the scene at the storage facility. The manager takes them to the vehicle and there the, the officer was able to run the tag on it. And it's here where they discover that this was the vehicle in question that they were looking for in the disappearance of Derek Ruff and Joshua Jackson. Because of the circumstances, finding the vehicle here in front of the storage unit with no one inside of the vehicle, the officer calls and reports what he found, and then more officers come out here to the storage facility, and they begin searching for Derek and Joshua. Along with the multiple other police officers who came, they also brought cadaver dogs with them, and they began walking up and down the rows of the storage units here, having the canine sniff each unit, looking for any sense of decomposition. As they were sweeping the property, the canine cadaver dogs hit on this unit right here. Officers immediately cut the lock, and when they opened the roll-up door, the horrible smell of death smacked them all in the face. They immediately stopped and called in the investigators who came in and removed all the items from the storage unit one by one until they found Derek Ruff laying on the floor of the unit, deceased. Inside of the storage unit, there was stuff everywhere. It, there was stuff piled all on top of Derek's remains and there was stuff underneath him. And, and on top of that, the body was so badly decomposed that it was clear Derek Ruff had probably been deceased and laying in this storage unit since the time that he went missing. Now, obviously YouTube won't let me show the uncensored images of them. And quite frankly, you really wouldn't want to see them. I always get the uncensored images from law enforcement most of the time on all of these cases that I do. So I've seen a lot of bad stuff over the years and these pictures just made me sick to my stomach just by glancing at them. And I mean, that's just how absolutely horrific they are. After the coroner extracts Derek's remains from the unit, they continue removing the items and uh, they continue looking for Joshua Jackson. By the time they get to the very end of the unit, there's no sign of Joshua. They continued uh, running the cadaver dogs around the rest of the storage units in the property. And the cadaver dogs also alerted on a completely different unit, this unit right here. So again, law enforcement cuts the lock to the unit and they start removing all the items from this unit and they uncover the remains of Joshua Jackson. This unit was pretty much directly across the way from the unit where they found Derek. Joshua Jackson's body was in just as bad a shape as Derek's was, meaning that they both had probably been killed at the same exact time, right at the time they went missing and then, you know, left in these storage units where their bodies were found. Both Derek and Joshua had been shot to death 
and based off the evidence that they found inside of the storage unit it appeared as if they had been shot inside of those units where their bodies were found law enforcement had a lot of questions that they wanted to answer as they investigated these murders like the obvious what happened here and who did it but also why were these two men killed two men who didn't seem to to cause any trouble with anyone why were they killed why were they killed in different storage units why were they separated there had to be some kind of reason why they were separated and killed here before detectives started trying to answer those questions they had to first go and give joshua and derek's families the bad news as detectives are investigating the murders of Derek Ruff and Joshua Jackson, at first, they're stumped. Everything, though, would take a turn. Almost four months after the murders, detectives finally make an arrest in the murder of Rodriguez Apollo Rucker, the first murder we talked about at the very beginning of this story. On March 26th of 2019, 30-year-old Philman Deshaun Chambers was arrested in Athens, Georgia, and charged with the murder of Rodriguez Rucker. After the four-month investigation, detectives were able to uncover on that December the 14th, the day of his murder, Rodriguez Rucker met with a 24-year-old girl in Athens named Andrea Page Browner. She was a, a local prostitute. Detectives were able to use Rodriguez's phone to piece together what happened on his last day, and they first saw that Rodriguez had been texting with Andrea and they saw that she quoted him $80 for a quick visit. And Rodriguez was able to negotiate that price down to 70. And then Andrea told him where to meet her. The detectives then used his phone to determine that Rodriguez used the Lyft app to get a ride right here to the Days Inn in Athens. The Lyft driver dropped him off. Rodriguez went into the hotel and almost exactly 30 minutes later, Rodriguez used the Lyft app again and ordered another ride, this time back home. As the Lyft driver drops Rodriguez Rucker off here, right in front of his home, another car pulls in right up to Rodriguez. This time, Philemon Chambers gets out and he shoots and kills Rodriguez. Philemon Chambers was in an opposing gang, the Gangster Disciples. He was also Andrea Browner's pimp and he followed Rodriguez from the hotel in his lift ride and he followed and he watched Rodriguez get out here at his house and as the lift driver pulled away he pulled down into the court and he made his move now law enforcement hasn't officially said this it was implied and this is a little speculation on my part but it wasn't very long after Chambers arrest that law enforcement released the arrest warrants for four people in connection with the death of Joshua Jackson and Derek Rook. So the speculation and implications are that, that Chambers was arrested for the murder of Rodriguez Rucker and he offered up names in Derek Ruff and Joshua Jackson's murder in exchange for not getting a death penalty or, or, or getting a better deal on his sentence. Again, this is uh, still an open investigation, so law enforcement hasn't 100% confirmed this, but it kind of fits. He gets arrested, and immediately the police have information, and they have enough to issue arrest warrants against these gang members, Leslie Green, Shabazz Gildry, Robert Carlisle, and Justin Davis, and they were all charged with felony murder, use of a firearm during a violent crime, and use of a firearm resulting in a, in a death. All for Joshua Jackson and Derek Ruff. Philman Chambers only received two new charges involved with Derek Ruff and Joshua Jackson, and that was concealing the death of another. So that's why it only fits that Philman was arrested and he told them he was involved in these, this double homicide and he gave up names and he, instead of getting charged with felony murder, they gave him concealing the death of another, which is he would barely get any time for. But that's on top of the, the one murder charge that he had for the murder of Rodriguez Rooker. Like I said, it all just fits. It just screams to me that he got a deal. He was the only one not charged with felony murder for Derek Ruff and Joshua Jackson. 
on top of all of that, Carlisle, Green, and Guidry, all three received charges for criminal gang activity as well. So law enforcement doesn't know for certain, but they believe either Derek and Joshua, they either ran across the wrong person at the wrong time, or this gang known as the Gangster's Disciples, they tried to rob Derek and Joshua that day and it turned deadly. Either way, after it was confirmed that the Gangster Disciples were responsible for Derek and Joshua's murders, the case was turned over to the gang unit detectives and the police went from trying to, to catch what they thought would be a single killer to now taking down a whole gang of violent killers. Since the initial arrest of Philman Chambers, detectives were able to get a judge to sign off on a whole slew of wiretaps and they started listening in on all of the uh, gang's phone calls. And this is just since they uncovered the bodies of Derek and Joshua in the storage unit here. The Athens gang unit to date has handed down over 21 indictments related to the murders of Derek and Joshua and or the gang activity around it. And it's still open to this day and they still have plans on fully indicting more people and arresting more people for the gang activity that led to the murders of Joshua Jackson and Derek Ruff. And as more and more arrests are being made, the detectives are actually uncovering just how large the rabbit hole goes. And now it has blossomed into one of the biggest cases that this area has ever dealt with, with charges now ranging from just simple drug charges all the way up to RICO charges and organized crime charges as they unravel the rabbit hole that they've gone down. At this point now, along with the Athens gang unit, the Department of Justice has gotten involved as well as the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. And they are regularly making arrest and issuing warrants for these gangster disciple members. I mean, they, they're trying to wipe out the whole gang. They're using the wiretaps that they got to listen on phone calls to catch them talking about stuff. It's, it's crazy how the, the murders of Derek Ruff and Joshua Jackson spiraled into the state of Georgia against the gangster disciples. And unfortunately, because of all the major arrests and all the gang members that they've taken down and all the charges that they handed out, have handed out, it has kind of taken center stage now over the, the murder investigations of uh, Derek Ruff and Joshua Jackson. Uh, those are, seem to be almost an afterthought at this point. We still don't know why Josh and Derek were brutally murdered in the storage complex here none of the gang members will say, you know, whether it was a robbery or if they just didn't like the way they looked that day or, or what was the reason for killing them. So it's unclear why the two men who didn't seem to have any affiliations with this gang, it's, it's unclear why they were brutally gunned down in their prime. At this point, we're four years in. We don't know why they were shot and killed. The murderers have been arrested and are sitting in jail. They're, they're going to be going to prison for the rest of their lives. There's no hope for them getting out anymore. But Joshua Jackson and Derek Russ families still have no answers. They still have no clue why they were shot and killed. If any new developments come out in this case, I will keep you informed. If we ever find out what happened, I will keep you informed. That is going to do it for this episode today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're new here, go down and hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. Thank you all. I will see you again in my next one. Please, all of you, stay safe and stay healthy. Much love to you all.